already three months early, three months before the fight, Cyborg is already bringing the heat to Amanda Nunes. No doubt about it. Cyborg has opened up on Amanda Nunes like she's never done before, actually. Chris Cyborg never really tries to intimidate her fighters verbally. She's just kind of a nice person. She's shaking your hand. Thanks for taking the fight. She's usually just that type of person. She brings the aggression in the octagon, right? For this fight here, though, with Amanda Nunes, Chris Cyborg has opened up. She has cracked open Pandora's box and all type of shit is leaping up out of there. This Crionche business? Oh, my gosh. That's lethal, man. And I'm the reason why I really didn't touch this subject before is because it's really hard to talk about another culture's beefs. If Chris Cyborg says that this girl is a traitor and a sellout to her people, then that's what Chris Cyborg is saying. And the way that it's explained, it does sound like that's about right. It does sound like it's about right. But what I will say is this is fight selling gold right now. Chris Cyborg has managed to finally get an opponent that she can lay into, truly lay into, because she's probably been thinking this for a long time. Like, how dare you leave your team like that and go and sell? How dare you leave your team to go over to American Top Team and roll with that and roll with them, apparently selling, um, you know, uh, BJJ tips and, and training stuff tips and all of the stuff like you know the bjj stuff and then also laying up next to this freaking covington colby because cyborg has dug into amanda nunez and she scooped a, a bit of her soul out she literally has scooped a heaping pelping of her soul out she has called this girl basically a coward by not stepping up to covington and she's also called her a creonte which is basically a turncoat, a sellout. Somebody somebody who will sell out their own people. There's a special word for those people. In my culture, there's a special word for those people. We hate being around those type of people. So I can imagine the type of disgust that Chris Cyborg feels for Amanda Nunes. Now, it's not super lethal. It's not to the, it's not that heightened, but she's damn sure selling this fight. And it's early too. I cannot imagine what is going to be cranking out of Chris Cyborg moving forward. Do you understand that when they go to this fight, UFC 232, Amanda Nunes is going to walk out into that crowd and it's going to be a crowd of people wearing those gray Creonte shirts. It's going to be a crowd of m- people wearing those gray Creonte shirts with Amanda Nunes face on it, with the skull head and with the, um, oh, she got Amanda Nunes with the damn, with the, um, the headgear on, you know, protecting her head and shit. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Chris Cyborg, man. Chris Cyborg went there. She... She hit the bullseye with that one. And the reason why she hit the bullseye so well is because you can tell that it's real. You can tell that she really actually feels that way. She's not just trying to gas up a fight. She actually really feels like that. She's like, uh, no, I got more heart than this girl has. We don't have to talk about fighting. I have more heart than she has. That's a, that's a liver shot right there. That's a verbal liver shot right there, straight up. So, you know, Chris Cyborg is selling the fight. Hey, guys, I'm going to tell you, Chris Cyborg is selling this fight so well. She actually came over to Channel MMA with Jay, man. She viewed one of my videos and left a little bit of advertisement in the comment section on one of the videos. So much love to Chris Cyborg, man. Coming over, joining Team Channel MMA with Jay. I love it. I love when people support the independent YouTube channels and just still enjoy the content that we have out here because we love what we do. You know, we love what we do. We appreciate all of the fighters out there, and I definitely appreciate the champ. Definitely appreciate the champ, the GOAT, Chris Cyborg. But let's, you know, let's just keep rolling with it. Amanda Nunes right now, she is on life support with this whole, with the actual verbal game that's happening. If they have a press conference, it's going to be heated. It's actually going to be heated. They're going to be asking about all of this stuff, and it's so uncomfortable. 
It's so uncomfortable because, you know, Amanda Nunes, I don't think she meant any harm by coming over to America. People want to come to America. That's just the reality. I don't care which way you slice it. There's an honesty, honest truth about that. People want to come to America. Now, how it, the way that you come, yes, there is a respectful way to come without turning your back on your country, really. But, and I never thought that Amanda Nunes turned her back on her country, but it did look odd. You know that video that the guy put out where he's showing the, um, he's basically showing Amanda Nunes rooting for Tisha Torres against Jessica Andrade. I actually thought that was odd. When I was watching the fight, I was kind of like, wait a minute, why are you going for, I'm not understanding why you would be going for Tisha Torres so hard. I understand that you guys are friends, but aren't you also friends with Jessica Andrade? Why won't you just be quiet? Just watch the fight. Why do you have to be screaming out stuff like you're not her coach? You you are both friends with Amanda, with J- Jessica Andrade and Tisha Torres. Why are you rooting for Tisha Torres? And then it's like Jessica Andrade is the young, you know, the young. Th- there's so much in common. She's a young Brazilian woman, right? Young Brazilian lesbian woman. It looks like it ticks all the boxes. You should have just been like, hey, you got this. Win or lose, you've got this. And if you need anything from me, I'm here for you. Now, you know that Tisha Torres is my friend, so I'm not going to be rooting on anybody, but I want, you to, I want you to know that I have your back. Either way that it goes, I have your back. And then she should have just sat in the audience and been quiet. She should have told Nina, hey, Nina, let's keep this one professional. Let's just, you know, we're not going to be hooping and hollering. Whoever wins, we'll give a round of applause and we'll be happy for them, but we're going to be there for the loser as well. You know, that's how you handle shit when it's complicated like that. She was up there upset, like when whenever Tisha Torres would get taken down. Ah, damn. She was screaming stuff out. Grip the leg, grab the ankle, grab the ankle. Okay, you got to high crotch right now. High cr- what the hell? I thought that was strange too, like... That's no friend of mine. I'll definitely tell you that right now. That's no friend of mine. And Jessica Andrade even said it. She said, this girl is such a sellout. She called her out about it. She said, you're a freaking sellout. You are a sellout. There's no reason why you, I saw you cheering for the other side. I saw you over there cheering for the other side. You couldn't just sit there and keep your mouth shut. We understand we're all friends. We're all friends. Shit, I'm friends with Tisha Torres. You don't think Jessica Andrade is friends with Tisha Torres. They're all friends. It's the women's divisions. It's the women's divisions. They're all friends at the end of the day. So it's like, you couldn't just be quiet just for a moment, you know? And Jessica Andrade comes off like a very nice person. You know, I understand she's lethal in the octagon, but she's just, she's just chill. Whenever you hear her interview, she seems very chill. She always has a big smile on her face. Whenever she does her face-offs, big smile on her face. And she's just kind of, You know, like, she's just a chill person. Seems like anybody could actually get along with her. I think that she seems like anybody would get along with her. You know, I wish that she spoke English so that she could do an interview with Coach. Because that would be a really good interview. That would be a really good interview. Because she's just an open and honest person. So I didn't understand that whole thing with Amanda Nunes. But, you know, that this is basically, it's turned into a bit of a rant. But this is what we'll say. Chris Cyborg has started early. Chris Cyborg has started early. She's revved up the engine already. She's got the high octane shit in there and she is ready to go 100 miles an hour all the way to December 30th, UFC 232. And then she's going to unload. As soon as she gets to the target, she's going to absolutely just light it up. I'm really feeling this fight build up right here. I know Amanda is sweating. She's probably sweating bullets right now because this is the most animosity that she's had in a fight ever. Valentina was able to get under Amanda Nunes' skin. We all saw when Amanda Nunes punched, you know, she didn't really punch Valentina, but she kind of punched her a little bit. Like she extended her fist into her face when they were doing that face off, you know? So this fight buildup is about to get interesting. And I have a feeling that for UFC 229, everybody's going to be in the building everybody's gonna be in the building man they might have they're gonna have chris cyborg in there and amanda nunez dc in there with john jones nate diaz man if i was nate diaz i would do something i'd be doing my own press conference on thursday night i'm doing a press conference in front of the damn planet hollywood i'm doing a press conference i'm giving i'm um signing photos signing autographs i'm taking pictures and i'm giving out free t-shirts 
This moment right here is a very big moment in MMA. I've never been so hyped for a bunch of UFC cards. But this is it right here. Chris Cyborg is finally getting that big deal moment. I'm hyped about it. I know you guys are hyped about it. Cyborg Nation is hyped about it. It is going down, man. UFC 232 is already heating up. Cyborg versus Nunez. Anyways, guys, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Leave your thoughts in the comments section.